word was go. On a morning in February 1965, our shipment started down the hill from the Atomic Energy Commission test facility near Los Angeles, California. We headed up the coast on Highway 101. Our cargo was valuable. It was needed for the future of space travel and exploration. Arrival at Vandenberg Air Force Base was on schedule. The final destination was a launch pad on the base. We unloaded what was to be the first nuclear reactor power system to operate in space. Its name, SNAP-10A. The power from SNAP-10A comes from the direct conversion of heat to electricity. The heat is produced by fissioning atoms in the nuclear reactor. On the pad, we were preparing SNAP-10A to go into orbit on an Agena vehicle. The booster was an Atlas. This was a test flight called Snapshot. Snapshot was sponsored by the Atomic Energy Commission in cooperation with the United States Air Force. The Snapshot flight was scheduled to obtain technical information for the application of nuclear reactor power systems in satellites and spacecraft. A reliable source of electrical power is a firm requirement in space programs of today and the future. For many of the more ambitious missions of our future space programs, no other power concept will be so light, so long-lived, and so economical. The effort to develop this power source started in 1956 when the Atomic Energy Commission initiated a program called SNAP, Systems for Nuclear Auxiliary Power. The program was to explore the development of reactors and isotopic generators as power sources for space, land, and sea. The prime contractor for the development of compact nuclear reactors, including the SNAP-10A power system, was Atomics International, a division of North American Aviation Incorporated. Technical problems in the development of a space reactor power system were complex. Many unique engineering problems had to be solved. We designed SNAP-10A to be safe. During reactor assembly, testing, and handling, we could work with and around the fully fueled reactor. We built SNAP-10A to start up by radio command from the ground and operate automatically in a long-lasting orbit around the Earth. After operation and shutdown, this system will remain in orbit for thousands of years. We tested SNAP-10A for its eventual re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. It will disassemble and disintegrate into small particles whose radioactivity will have decayed to non-hazardous levels in orbit before falling to Earth. But system re-entry was only one area of development. We also programmed extensive system performance tests. We qualified the flight system design to endure the environments of factory through launch and orbit operation. With Lockheed Missiles and Space Company, the Air Force Missile System Contractor, we validated the electrical compatibility of the integrated satellite. Complete simulated flight sequences were performed. But now, on the launch pad at Vandenberg, we were preparing for the real test, the snapshot flight. In the early evening, the system was hoisted to the 119-foot level in the launch tower. Rigid checkouts and inspections were made. Check item five. Electrical Check compatibility item five. tests were performed. Check item six. Check item seven. Check item seven. Check item eight. Check item eight. Check item nine. Check item nine. Check item ten. Check item ten. Check item ten. Checkouts completed, the SNAP-10A system was mated to the Agena. A simulated launch, ascent, and orbital startup sequence was demonstrated. All control and instrumentation functions were exercised and the responses verified. Area condition all non personnel clear the area. At 2.30 a.m. on April 3, 1965, we were ready for the countdown. 
begin countdown. This task will be conducted on net one. In the early morning darkness, the engineers and technicians began to verify the readiness of the hundreds of items vital to any successful launch. Check item 25. Check item 25. Check item 26. Check item 26. Check item 27. Check item 27. Check 28. Check 28. Prepare for void pillar block removal. In the launch tower, SNAP 10A countdown procedures were underway. Void pillar blocks removed. From minus the control drum. Completion of each step was verified and the information was relayed to the launch conductors in the launch operations building. Task 8, complete. Begin task 17, snap Daybreak and the countdown continued. After the nose cap was secured over the reactor, access panels were removed and the final preparations in the tower began. Task 17 complete. Snap 10A was ready to go. All unnecessary personnel clear the pad area. Go. The launch EOS. tower was removed. EC. Go. EOS. Go. GC. Go. Go, PNC, go, PPC, go. Task 19, complete. CRKOD, go, CC, go, TM, go, Page, go, PMCC, go. Task 20, complete. Vehicle fueling operations were completed. SSD readiness check. Lockheed launch conductor. Lockheed is go. Convair launch conductor. GDC is go. AI launch conductor. Atomics International is go. On my mark, it will be 10 seconds and counting. Mark. April 3, 1965, liftoff at 1.24 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. The launch vehicle was soon out of sight, but linked to Earth by telemetry. Data acquisition and processing began with vehicle liftoff and continued through each operational phase of the flight. SNAP 10A was launched southward over the Pacific Ocean. 62 minutes after launch, the SNAP satellite was in orbit. We acquired data that verified the orbit to be circular, long-lasting, and stable. Satellite altitude was about 800 miles orbiting the Earth every 112 minutes. During the second orbit, less than four hours after launch, a radio command signal to activate the reactor startup circuits was transmitted. Upon command, Two control drums were rotated inward immediately. The other two drums were turned slowly inward until a controlled fission reaction was sustained in the reactor core. The telemeter data was analyzed. Approximately six hours after initiating the startup command, the reactor was operating, one of the truly significant milestones of the snapshot flight test. Heat was produced in the reactor core and the heat shield was ejected. The heat was removed from the reactor by a liquid sodium potassium metal called NAC flowing through the core. The NAC liquid was circulated through the system by a thermoelectric magnetic pump. Checks on NAC temperature and flow rates were made. 
the startup sequence continued. In the converter, heat from the NAC flowed through small thermoelectric elements, and the excess heat was radiated into space. The flow of heat through the elements produced electric current. Electric power was produced from the combined thermoelectric elements. The system performance was evaluated. The startup sequence proceeded as planned. The attention given to every detail in the development of the system was paying off. At the beginning of the ninth orbit, a little more than eight hours after reactor startup, the SNAP-10A system was at full power, producing more than 500 watts of electricity. Another significant accomplishment. The successful launching and operation in orbit of the SNAP-10A represents a notable achievement in both our space and atomic energy programs. I think it forecasts a growing role for nuclear energy in space in supplying electrical power for deep space probes and manned missions. The SNAP-10A is our first reactor in space. The technology employed in the SNAP-10A can be applied to nuclear space power units to produce up to tens of kilowatts of power. Because this type of system can operate with few moving parts, it should prove a very reliable source of power in space. Power in space. The accomplishments of SNAP-10A made the promise for tomorrow a reality for today. SNAP-10A performed with extreme precision for 43 days before an electronic malfunction in the spacecraft prematurely shut down the reactor. An identical SNAP-10A unit has operated successfully on the ground for almost a year. Telemeter data from the orbiting reactor followed closely the earlier data produced during ground tests on temperatures, coolant flows, radiation levels, and power output. The flight test demonstrated the capability of SNAP-10A to survive launch and ascent into space, to start up remotely in a long life safe orbit, and to attain stabilized nuclear electric operation at rated power. System performance was monitored nuclear safety was demonstrated. Mission accomplished. SNAP-10A has proved that reactor power systems will be useful in America's space programs. Systems that are compact, long of life, safe, rugged, and reliable. Systems that can be upgraded in power to meet advances in space technology. Systems that can provide electric power for weather satellites, for communication satellites, for space stations, for a base on the moon. And for probes into deep space. These ambitious missions will require nuclear power. Snap reactor systems will be ready. Go, US, go, GP, go, go our own.